Uh, Cotton, your microphone, please. Thank you. On the left hand side. Up. Okay, it's good. Up. Now it goes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Alan, thank you very much for your kind introduction. I got a task uh, to speak about a uh, specific uh, shock. Those are uh, associated with severe inflammation. Let's say it is acute fulminant myocarditis form. And if we think about that, you see at this table, there are a lot of different etiologies, which is important uh, because we need here probably very um, different additional um, medical strategies in addition to the um, MCS support system. So extremely important for giant cell myocarditis, eosinophilic myocarditis, viral myocarditis, and probably more fashion in the moment, the checkpoint inhibitors, that is that one we see. Independent, what kind of inflammatory cardiomyopathy is in front of us. We have, of course, different uh, prognoses, which are really worse uh, if we take the example of the giant cell myocarditis. But that is also important if we think of data analyzing that we have here different diseases with different outcomes. So you see this patient here, I'm pretty sure everybody will say, yes, this is a patient in a C or D shock scenario, right and left ventricular uh, function is significantly impaired. And if you go to the uh, European uh, survey, you can see that nearly everybody would go in that scenario to ECMO, try to stabilize the patient, hope that there's a recovery for the next 14 days, and then probably go for bridge to Albert or transplantation. Um, what are the expected outcomes? Just recently published, you see that here, and I think that is important. When we speak about that kind of shocks, the outcome in patient with um, heart failure or myocardial infarction has an up to 80% mortality. Those with Myocarditis, short-term mortality, 30-day mortality is about 40%. Uh, if there's good or bad, I would say there's still a gap which we think to, th uh, to find strategies to further improve that. So I would like to try to discuss with you at least four or five questions. So the question is, when we have a patient with an, uh, severe myocarditis and acute fulminant myocarditis in front of us, how can we estimate or improve short-term mortality? Is this important for the selection of circulatory support strategies? And what about the selection of specific treatment strategies? And what kind of options we have to bridge to recovery? So let's think about um, how to estimate to prove short-term mortality. This is in a nice paper in myocarditis, young kids, survival rate up to 70%, but depending on the pre-ECMO lactate levels. So that means that we need a fast support, that is important, and we still will have a worse outcome in these myocarditis young kids when we have a reamination scenario in front of us. In the end, we see that the post-ECMO left ventricular ejection fraction predicts also survival and myocarditis. And I think that is extremely important that we do not think only about circulatory support, but also that we do everything that at the end, left ventricular function is uh, more or less cured and can come out with an uh, improved ejection fraction. Others have here um, uh, developed a risk score for recovery in myocarditis. It comes from China, but I think there's something uh, interesting inside. They also speak about uh, the risk score with respect to rhythm diseases, CK, troponin T, and also treatment initiation independent from um, the mechanical support systems. Mechanical support systems, selection, do we have here um, an advantage of different support systems, or do we just need one support for everybody? Let's come back to this patient here. I think it's clear we would like to have an ECMO, especially since we have here also an additional right ventricular dysfunction, and impeller under these conditions is the wrong option. However, if we would come up with an ECMO, we will increase for the left ventricle, relatively sure, the load. You would increase the afterload. And that is something what we say, especially probably under myocarditis conditions, is not that what we would like to have. 
So ECMO would offer circulatory support, but leads to a further rise in afterload, and especially under inflammatory conditions, this could have an important impact when we think about whether this could be further improved. In myocarditis, also in the myocardium, we have due to alone due to the information in the in inflammation independent of the shock scenario, an activated renin-angiotensin system, an activated cytokine system together with the mechanical stress. And that all together induces further cardiac fibrosis and worst outcome. So the, we know from Elvis patients that unloading can interfere directly in the myocardium with the activated immune system and also trigger directly just due to unloading an antifibrotic potency. And therefore, under these conditions, we decided that this patient should not have only an ECMO, but especially due to the inflammatory afterload increase, knowing or discussing that this has an several additional uh, negative impact for the inflammatory status, we wanted to have inventing and treated this patient with an ECMELA support. And along with the ECMELA, we have this venting, and we are able to reduce the afterload uh, increase from the monotherapy with the ECMO to an hopefully uh, better status by reduction of the left ventricular and diastolic pressure, the afterload, and probably also an improvement for microcirculation and antisatin inflammatory properties. We have taken biopsies in that kind of patients. We really wanted to know what's going on here. And I just show you that these are the inflammatory protein expressions of a patient with a severe myocarditis condition, untreated. And here with an unloading concept. So alone the question, what kind of load or venting in severe myocarditis has here an impact on the expression of inflammatory um, um, cytokine patterns together with energy metabolism expressions, fibrotic uh, expressions, and those who are important for cardiac contractility. And especially for inflammation, so inflammatory CD3 cells or macrophages were significantly downregulated when a patient with myocarditis had been treated in addition uh, with an unloading concept. So if this is true, and we have probably the opportunity to to think about a more personalized medicine option in patients with cardiogenic shock, and especially when the shock is due to inflammation and myocarditis. So look at this patient here. He's in shock. He has a severe myocarditis. You see here on the left side the, um, uh, the histology. Is this necessary that this patient gets an ECMO? Left ventricular function is fine. Lim left ventricular uh, a right ventricular function is fine. Left ventricular function is impaired. So we decided to give here only an impeller under these conditions. And what I found is extremely interesting is here, due to unloading, you see that the left ventricle is not really on a high contractile status. But one minute later, when you stop the unloading, suddenly you get back your contractility. This is shown that you have your form of unloading and hypernation is probably also important uh, with to deal with the inflammatory concept in the myocardium. It's just a hypothesis, that's for sure. But I would like to show you our experience, what we have uh, seen here in the last three, four years um, at the Charité. So we have here data of 25 patients with fulminant myocarditis in shock. And we have a mortality rate of about uh, only 26%. When we have patients, and they were more or less in the sky shock level C, some of them in D, we lost no patient. If we have a patient with an ECMELA concept, then we have a 40% mortality rate, similar to that what we have seen through the European experience before. But those patients we lost in the ECMELA concept, um, most of them were those who had an, a prolonged reanimation scenario outside. And the important thing is that all of these patients were not only unloaded or they got, uh, in addition, just an circulatory support, all of them got also an immune therapy approach. And I believe this is extremely important.
specific treatment strategies. Because ECMO and probably also Impella has mostly in circulatory support, probably ECMO has some additional um, options for the modifying of the disease. But I think especially in the inflammatory status, we need something more. But how has that been done? I have shown you this slide and I showed you myocarditis. Short-term mortality is 40%. But if we go to all these papers, in 80%, there were no biopsy done, no biopsy-guided therapy. And I think that is wrong. Independent of what kind of the device we're using, we have to identify the disease, and we have to see what can we do in addition. So look at this patient here. I remember that it happened probably uh, 45 years ago. A young lady, she was in shock, thick walls, and it was discussed that this must be a cardiomyopathy. Let's go to an Albert more or less immediately after ECMO. I said, no way. Let's do a biopsy. He also recommended, according to the ESC guidelines, at least as a 2A recommendation for patients who have a rapidly progressive heart failure or they are in shock under these conditions. We found a giant cell myocarditis, which is treatable under these conditions. And if you do so, you have an improvement and survival rate under these conditions. But of course, you need in circulatory support under um, the triple therapy with OKT, steroids, and cyclosporine reacts. You see here that we were very successful. And that is a beauty. It was very, very fast. From the 20th of October to the 18th of November, we had a full bridge under these conditions. So additional therapy, I believe, is extremely important. However, sometimes we need time. In the case before, that was very fast, probably in 10, 14 days. And ECMO could be here, a fine approach for the bridging. But due to my experience, very often we need much more two weeks, three weeks, the longest recovery in the myocarditis, we had a patient for about 40 or 45 days. And this is the scenario of the patient I had shown you before. We started with an eggmella. Then the patient's right ventricle improved over the time. It was not any more necessary to have the ECMO, but we still wanted to have the impeller on board. And that allows us a downgrade uh, due to a switch from the impeller to the axillary um, axis. And then the patient can be mobilized over the time. And I think this is an additional extra advantage when we think about bridging of that kind of patients. And that, I think, is important to take in mind that also those patients where we have an Albert finally on board, that unloading, you see that here from a patient with a severe myocarditis, which got at the end an Albert, that due to the unloading, we also see an anti-immunosuppressive um, movement under that kind of conditions. So I come to my conclusion and to a concept. I think it's clear, acute fulminant myocarditis needs very often mechanical circulatory support. The prognosis and the recovery depends on the degree of the disease, the timing, we have to be fast, and those who need some CPR have really bad cards. The concept, what I opened here is that I strongly believe that especially in these disease, we can have a more or less selection according uh, to the case orientation. So ECMO, I would like to see in a patient with CPR and especially in right ventricular involvement. The combination with an impeller is probably important since Venting or unloading exerts, in addition, anti-inflammatory effects. So it goes more like directly to the mode of action of the disease. And especially for bridging, impella and axillary, and then a prolonged expression is probably extremely important for myocarditis patients because myocarditis patients very often have a high chance for the bridge to recovery. And last but not least, I think just prepare the circulatory support is here not enough. We need, of course, also a causal immune modulatory therapy, as we do it also for myocardial infarction patients, where we, for instance, open the vessels. However, this is just a concept that needs further evaluation, and I would like to end my talk with our new PROMISE program, where we use Impella, but also ECMO, and a randomized trial in patients with myocarditis uh, to see uh, whether the combination uh, is every time um, uh, necessary or whether we have ECMO or Impella scenarios to help these kind of patients. Thank you very much for your attention. 
Thank you uh, so much, uh, Carson, for this very nice talk. And I'm sure we'll have a lot of questions for you uh, at the end uh, of uh, this uh, session in, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, roughly half an hour from now. Uh, so uh, we move on to uh, the next uh, speaker, which is uh, Nicolas Brechot, my uh, colleague and